Hey guys, it's me. A while back I wrote on my blog about a series called the Ever After High Dolls. They're a spin-off of Monster High. And today I have a review of one of those dolls. It is Madeline Hatter. Um, Ever After High. Ever After High is essentially a high school for fairy tale characters. So where Monster High has the daughter of Dracula, uh, Ever After High has the daughter of the Mad Hatter. Uh, there are four dolls in the original line, or the inaugural release, so to speak. Uh, this is one of them, and this was actually the one I was most excited about because she was super cute in the the promo shots and in the web series. She's kind of like like the Luna Lovegood of Ever After High, or the Pinkie Pie of Ever After High, which I, I like quite a bit. But let's talk about Madeline, who I'll probably call Maddie throughout this review. She has her little teacup headband on. Uh, her hair is a mixture of purple and seafoam green. We've seen this color, or a very similar color, on Twyla on the Monster High line. She has it styled in these ringlets. There are a good chunk of them. Uh, the problem with this is that when they put her in the box, they put her in the box so her hair is pretty much separated, which makes for a big bald spot when you take her out of the box. So what you'll want to do, you may have to fumble a bit with your finger and just kind of like finger comb some of the middle so she doesn't have big bald spots. I do like the color combination. I think this is a really cool purple. I totally want to, uh, you know, match it on dolly hair or something so I can reroute it all in this purple. Look at her face, if you will. Um, you'll notice that it is very round, it's also very flat, but it's also super, super adorable. Uh, her eyes have kind of this like hand-painted look to them, as opposed to the decal eyes that I'm seeing a lot on Monster High. And I'm sure these are decal eyes too, but they don't look like it. Uh, and I love their placement. I love that she kind of has a smirk thing going on. If you look at it, she has one raised eyebrow and one that's not so raised. So that's really, really cute. Her body is similar to Halloween or Twyla. It's not exactly the same. Uh, this is a little more humanoid than Halloween or Twyla. They're pretty much the same height if you don't count the teacup. Uh, of course, their faces will be different shapes. Now, I didn't go into a full detail on this on my blog or anything because I didn't want to take all of her clothing off to do it. Uh, but I did link to a blog that dressed or took all the clothing off of um, a Halloween and one of these guys and put them side to side so you can see all the differences. So go to the write-up for that link because um, that'll go into more specifics about the exact differences with her body. Her outfit is adorable. She has this royal purple and this teal and gold going throughout the whole thing. It's just adorable. It's totally a tea party outfit in my eyes. Uh, to go with it, she has these cuffs. They are plastic. Uh, you can, of course, take them off if you take off her wrist, but they, they're pretty much stuck there to there, so they work. They totally work with the costume. I love the polka dotted tights. Perfect. And of course she has teapot shoes. Adorable, adorable, adorable. Uh, and her purse, of course, is a teapot, because she's Madeline Hatter. I mean, she's not a Mad Hatter who loves tea parties and such, so it totally fits. In terms of character development, she is very well defined. <laughs> For a doll line, she is very, very well defined. Because uh, you can tell her character right off the bat. There's no, I think it might be this, I think it might be this. You could tell she's the daughter of the Mad Hatter. The characters all come with these bookmarks that double as storybooks that tell you their story. So it's like the diary in a Monster High doll, but it's all here in a bookmark. So the one thing you'll need to know is what they come with. They come with a comb. They also come with a stand, um, and they come with that bookmark I just showed you. Their stand is actually really cool. Like, you couldn't do this with a Monster High stand at the moment because the doll would either fall this way or fall this way, or it wouldn't fit at the waist, so the doll would be like, her knees would be here. But you could totally do it with the uh, Ever After stand, so I'm loving that Mattel is actually putting stands in the boxes that make sense. Uh, one thing to note is it's inside the box, so don't throw the box away without opening up the book portion of the box and taking out the stand. Another thing to note is she does have a little accessory here. It's a two-fingered ring. Uh, if you take the, the plastic that's holding it on off, it does slip off quite easily, so just be weary about losing that. The only problem I really have with Madeline Hatter is that for some reason, and this could just be mine, she has a wonky knee. So this knee 
is really tight. And I, it's, I have a feeling that this is also why uh, she has actually one leg that is not as long as the other. So she doesn't stand really well if I try to pose her. And it's only just the smidgen, but it's just kind of weird. But the rest of her limbs are good. Solid, good limbs. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Madeline Hatter, uh, one of the four Ever After High Dolls. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you love her? Do you hate her? Uh, let's not start a flame war against Monster High or Ever After, please. Because I don't want to be monitoring any sort of flame wars. Um, but I want to know your thoughts. And uh, just let me know. You can check out my blog, Confessions of a Doll Collector's Daughter, or my Facebook page, also under Confessions of a Doll Collector's Daughter. And I will see you soon with another Ever After High review. See you later. Bye!